So it's uh, our train community hangout. Uh, I'm at ICO. Normally, Greg Meredith is uh, MCs these, uh, but he's out of town um, on a retreat. Um, but be happy to give uh, an update on the redemption process, uh, platform development, um, and and any other uh, questions um, that you all have. Um, so was so I guess start by saying hello to everyone. Uh, uh, the We'll give a chance for some others to join as well. So we've got HJ and Jim and Coin Interview and Ian and Patrick. Hey, how are you guys doing? Great, fine. Yeah, Thank good. You. Thanks for asking. Hey. Awesome. Awesome. Howdy. Hey, Patrick. So um, I'll start right off and give an update on the uh, redemption process. Uh, Greg and uh, David are working on the um, process uh, and, and uh, testing uh, it as well. So it's um, the the back end script, I believe, is working and, and uh, has been tested, which is, um, you know, once the input is collected from the user who is going through the redemption process, then um, the back end script would actually do the, the processing. The, so the front end work is still, um, uh, has some development work to be done. Um, the, um, you know, it, it, it'll it pop up a form that will collect the um, depositing or, or the depositing AMP address and the Ethereum address to which the rocks will be um, um, delivered and the uh, uh, name and email of the user and then it will uh, generate a receipt for them, um, and so that that parts of that process are not put in place yet. I think we've got um, several days before it's going to be ready. Um, my guess is the uh, earliest that the redemption will kick off is Sunday, um, but I haven't really gotten a um, solid status from Greg on his estimate for that. Um, but I think I think it's safe to say, uh, at least from, from my vantage point, that it won't be before Sunday when the uh, redemption process would start. And I think it will also run 10 days once it does start. So um, I don't have perfect information, but that give, given, the, uh, given the information I have, that's, um, I think, the, the right thing to um, communicate. Um, uh, a couple other people joined. Uh, welcome, Gary and DP. Uh, so, any any uh, questions about the redemption process? Yeah, I have a question. Um, is the form already uh, visible? I mean, no, it's it's behind um, a password protected um, uh, uh, form, you know. So it's. Okay. it's it's exposed to the internet, or at least to the a test one is, but it's not publicly visible. Yeah. Um, and before Sunday, would it be possible to get access to it so that maybe I could make a video of the whole process? Um, I think so. It's com that's up to uh, Greg to coordinate. Um, and it, it sort of de just depends on uh, the readiness. I certainly uh, personally want to test it um, uh, and, and go through the process, say, you know, at least for one one amp or whatever to redeem and, and make sure, um, you know, I just as a as a member and, and I want to make sure that it's it's uh, all there. So, uh, yeah, and then, uh, you know, we we need to uh, get instructions updated. Video would be helpful as and that, in fact, could be um, uh, suffice probably as the instruction. Um, so let's, HJ, let's coordinate with Greg, you know, uh, just offer to record that. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Any other questions? Um, okay, uh, HJ, uh, you want to also uh, announce the, um, the statement of work and agreement that uh, you struck with with Greg in the cooperative on your role. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, so I've set up a statement of work for organizing the the, the membership of the co-op, and 
the statement of work is also available on the Google Drive. Maybe I can, do you want me to share the screen for that or? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't share the document itself without sort of redacting the signatures, but um, you're welcome to share that as much as you want. Yeah. Um, okay, well, maybe I, I just keep it short for the moment. I can provide a link maybe. Uh, uh, it means also that we have to decide what we do with this uh, kind, of, kind of documents because it has some uh, personal information in it and yeah so what i would what i would suggest um and i guess this is you know policy kind of decisions but um most of the work that the co-op does uh you know should be visible and obviously there's some cases that protecting personal information like addresses signatures social security numbers and so forth but there's ways to do that like um you know, uh, block out that information and then render it again as a PDF and share the PDF or, or that that kind of thing. Uh, could be. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will block out the very personal details and then the rest is visible for uh, everybody. Yeah. And, and then that, just when you when you uh, also for the the agreement on the money I would uh, get as salary. That's that has to be open too. I think. No. That's that's a policy decision, I guess. It's, you could ask Greg. He would, I think, uh, I think he would recommend that that's open. But yeah, what does the rest uh, of the group think about it? I mean, all these financial details. I would say it depends on <clears throat> how you know traditional nonprofits. Or co-ops run their 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 transparency in that regard. It, it, I mean, it's usually corporations like right. They keep their, their all their financial records pretty private. This is different because it's open source and decentralized, and the community definitely has access to more information. <clears throat> but yeah, I think I, I mean yeah, also, honestly, yeah. I don't care what people are getting paid. Uh, I just you know want to see work being done. That's it. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're getting paid. I mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't. It's like I know one department is getting paid more than the other. It's like okay, what what is that? Is that just gonna create a conflict of interest? Like, well, I'm trying to get paid more. I mean, it's just very political. You guys have much more IT experience. I mean, in your in your professional opinion, anybody who's worked in IT, I mean, do you really need to know how much money your coworker makes or the dude down the, the block makes? I mean, does it make a difference? Well, I I think because finance will be also very open, so you will see. Yeah, but yeah, that's fine if the financial records are open, but if does, there, does a name need to be corresponding to the payment of, of, of the, that account, or is it just all, this is the burn rate of the company here, are they, like, companies, like, release their uh, quarter one um, expenses all the time, right? It's pretty standard. Yeah, but I think it's also easy when you say it's open, then you don't have access uh, problems because when you close it who has access to it yeah i understand that but if it's open you still are going to have problems for example uh if uh someone's getting paid three times more than what other people should feel they're getting paid now you have an, an internal argument that's not really going to go away i mean is that a good thing or a bad thing that's something that we're going to have to decide as an organization that's yeah but you see when that uh, gives uh, a source for problems then it's transparent and you can discuss about it. Yeah, so. there's, there's also uh, middle grounds to this. For example, um, the, the total amount of you know, salaries and contractor payments could be made visible, but not necessarily in more detail by person. So there's middle grounds to this. I, I, honestly, I think what should happen, to be honest with you, is the director should come up with a proposal, the co-op members should vote on it, and that's the whole idea of the stick, right? There's members that have yeah. voting rights. The directors are the ones that really come up with policies. Hopefully, they're listening to what the members want, and that's how that gets rolling. Is that? Am I missing any other sentiment so, there? Well, you know, now you see that we have a lot of issues to discuss about, and that's not uh, possible through Slack. So we need other tools for it, and 
that's why I would like to create an environment to create all kinds of issues and that we can find solutions for it and make decisions about it. So that's uh, what, my, what my take is on it. And um, I would, for example, start uh, after this hangout with a weekly hour for like a, like a member meeting. And there we could discuss briefly all the issues that we have or which have the most uh, priority. And then we could get this organization uh, up and running because it has to evolve organically, I think. So. Yeah, so that, this is a great discussion and, and yeah, uh, uh, having an, another meeting about some of these uh, decisions and policies are, are, uh, would be great. The um, just just so you're aware, HJ, the time after this beginning, 45 minutes from now, is typically the dev stand up time. So that you know, if if you're proposing a membership uh, forum regularly at that time, it won't work for for Navni, Greg, David, and myself, um, for example. Um, yeah, but I think that would not be a problem because you are the board and uh, you would mostly uh, uh, think about strategies and uh, missions and things like that. And so yeah, when yeah, things fine. become... You're aware of that. If you, wanted, if you wanted Greg at that meeting, it would be hard for him to attend um, that time. It's more like filtering uh, in very important subjects, and then it can go through to the board for a major decision or so. Okay, cool. Hey, so can you elaborate a bit more on the uh, the role and your your statement of work? I I'm familiar with it, but others aren't. You, oh, you just went on mute, HJ. Yeah, give me two minutes, then I get the statement of work. Uh, oh, great. I okay. It. All right. So a couple people uh, joined recently, Gary and Navni. Welcome. So just to queue up the next couple of topics, so we are, um, so HJ is going to, you know, review his statement of work and, and charter essentially. Um, uh, I, I reviewed all the, already the status of the uh, redemption process and uh, wanted to, uh, if, if anyone has questions about uh, the holding company and, and relationship with the co-op and so forth, I'd be happy to field those questions. Are there any other topics people wanna bring up later in the meeting? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, here's just a, a just a random question that came to my mind. I mean, if you if we get the if obviously the redemption is going to happen, uh, I don't know when, but when it does happen, you're going to have a bunch of amps. Uh, we, what what's going to happen with these amps? Um, right. So um, what Greg has said previously is that those would be sold gradually, um, as a way as a, a way of uh, raising uh, essentially uh, Bitcoin or possibly Ethereum. Um, uh, into the treasury of the cooperative, uh, he hasn't said, you know, how quickly that would occur. Um, but that's that's basically his decision, I think. So let's bring that question up again next week, or or on the uh, or on uh, the Slack channel too. Yeah, yeah. This so this is also an issue that we can discuss about. Um, I can share my screen now. Cool. Um, yeah, share your screen. So here's my uh, statement of work. I call myself an uh, operation manager, and my objective is uh, to create with all of you a smooth running organization. Uh, as I said before, I'm, I'm not uh, very directive but I would prefer that people have a consensus and go ahead with things. Um, so the goals are to, um, to, to get active inf member involvement so that we don't have a 
like a community next to the co-op, but that the co-op itself is is the community, you know. So uh, that means some uh, member uh, acquisition and some recording of data and so, and also that a task can be uh, submitted to all kind of members and that they get paid for it. Um, well, so there's a lot of subjects that have to need more uh, coordination, I think. So for marketing and PR, we have to agree about uh, what we communicate to the world through different channels, uh, resource recruiting, finance, organization, education, all these kind of subjects I would like to see more uh, uh, clearness about it. So I would be responsible and accountable for uh, some finance things and some administration uh, things. I have some miscellaneous uh, activities, like you can read it. And I would like to collaborate with a lot of other people. Uh, these are the people I know of at the moment, but that can be a lot more, of course. So are there any questions about this uh, statement of work? I think it's, it's uh, awesome that you're stepping up and taking these uh, roles. Um, you know, uh, we, we need, you know, organization of the membership process and, um, but, you know, the, the, the channel to collect feedback back into the, um, you know, uh, leadership structure of the co-op and, and all that's wonderful. And, and also, um, uh, you know, tracking of um, marketing and community uh, tasks. Great. Awesome. Yeah, we, we will see how it goes. I mean, we can only function together if we work together. So I hope people will uh, help me in this effort. So I have another uh, question uh, for you, Ed, and anybody else who's technically able to answer this question. Because yeah. you have an ERC-20 token now, uh, yeah. there's if, if you just go to any uh, wallet, Mist, My Ether Wallet, Parity, you can see all the contracts that exist on Ethereum as ERC-20 tokens. So um, there's a lot of projects that obviously use Ethereum. Uh, we can name a few, Augur, Golem, Gnosis, Singular DTV, Nexium, uh, which is uh, Beyond the Void. My question is, uh, is in your opinion, is there going to be an incentive for uh, those those projects to potentially write smart contracts to to port over into our chain? Because if you're obviously writing an ERC twenty contract up, I'm assuming the reason why we're doing that is because it's easier in the future to swap to the our chain network is this logic is everyone following my logic right now well um i i'm i'm following the 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 rock is um you know a redeemable redeemable coupon token that's temporary um in a sense in terms of its purpose um so just just for those that may be watching um you know this redemption process is about um uh exchanging amps for rocks um so the uh, cooperative will have a treasury of amps and the, the uh, participant will have rocks. The rocks um, can be moved around on the Ethereum network uh, just like any other ERC-20 token. Um, uh, and, but the, the intent is that the rocks will then be redeemable for a future token on the Artane platform itself. Um, and so there'll be another kind of redemption event uh, as soon as the platform is ready, and that'll be a, some length of time. And I don't know whether that'll be nine months from now or a year from now, possibly longer from now. Um, so what happens between now and then is, um, you know, somewhat uh, up to uh, the innovations that that happen around it. But but uh, that but that's the intent. Um, you know, I will say that uh, 
from Lively Gig's perspective, we're looking at ways that, you know, could we um, help the ecosystem by making rocks useful as a, a, a you know, a payment token to run um, certain services um, on Lively Gig. So we're exploring, uh, you know, we're exploring that, making it more useful. But going to your question, uh, Christian, um, you know, would it be useful for, uh, you know, Augur or some other Ethereum-based project to, um, to swap with rocks is maybe um no 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 sorry let me clarify to to the rev token or whatever the name of the token is going to be on our chain so my question is if i'm auger and we're like okay well this is sick we're on ethereum but no i'm going to build on our chain right now so uh -huh. is it possible because we're running on ethereum in general in a general sense i'm not saying every token that is uh, out there on ethereum platforms like auger are running erc20 contracts i'm just saying do you think it's going to be very easy for those Ethereum-based projects to switch over to our chain if they want it to? That's, oh, um, that's the question. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a, a black or white kind of yes or no, but, um, uh, you know, they could take their same user experience um, and write new smart contracts in Rolang um, or interface with APIs that either the cooperative or um, one of the holding companies expose that make it easy um, and and uh, retarget and run on our chain and in fact we we absolutely want that kind of thing to happen um, how how easy is it um, is is going to be seen in time but it's it's certainly not something that's uh, imminently ready because um, you know uh, rolling is still under development the Ro VM uh, uh, you know, node to node is not wired up yet. The consensus algorithm on uh, our chain is not running. So we have some time to answer that question, Christian, but definitely we want to attract other projects to, to retarget uh, our chain as its platform. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm involved in a couple of projects now that are using Ethereum with a plan to move to uh, our chain. And, uh, uh, any ERC20 token really can follow, uh, 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 can be converted uh, to any other ERC20 token and will clearly need a mechanism to trade the tokens for, uh, uh, or uh, to buy uh, the, the new tokens on our chain. But it, you know, uh, so the one thing is, you know, just buying the, the new coin. The other thing is interoperating. And there, there was going to be multiple blockchains. So they can move contracts over to Rolang uh, when they upgrade the system, when they, whatever. Uh, uh, moving over is going to be uh, painful a little bit, but you can represent any kind of value on the blockchain. So if you want to represent something that's on another blockchain as an asset on a different blockchain. Um, uh, essentially, there's mechanisms to do that. Yeah, just uh, one one minor uh, correction. So the, the, you were mentioning um, that uh, ERC-20 tokens can be converted. It's really not a conversion, but there can be markets for pairs of tokens right. for people trade uh, a pair of one ERC-20 contract with another or, or even, you know, other ways. But, but there, uh, ERC-20 is a, a standard interface for tokens um, on Ethereum. Um, not all tokens have to use ERC-20, but it makes it very convenient for exchanges and wallets to interact with any token, basically, that complies to ERC-20, which we do. Yeah, we can... Uh, even by, uh, uh, I put an order in uh, on Ether Delta for rocks this morning. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> so yeah, to my to my knowledge, just uh, for the record, there's uh, no rocks in circulation yet. Um, they are uh, sitting in uh, two wallets uh, owned by the cooperative, all of them. So the, there's, uh, to my knowledge, there's, there's been. Uh, you know, one billion uh, rocks minted, uh, and one, uh, you know, they, they're all tracked and managed by the ERC-20 contract. 
but the control over those uh, addresses are, are in two wallets or two uh, Ethereum accounts. Well, one Ethereum account, which is for the uh, redemption process. And then the other one is a multi-sig contract um, uh, that that uh, holds the majority of them. So so far, um, unless uh, uh, Greg took some some other action, I'm not aware of or don't expect. Uh, all of all of the rocks are held by the co-op, and so there is no market because there's no supply for them. Uh, right. in the trade yet. You, you can put in a buy order, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you know, I expect um, I expect uh, there to be rocks uh, available, um, even even possible possibly um, uh, at the at the beginning of the redemption process or uh, potentially before. So for example, there's been some um, statement of works and contracts that the uh, cooperative has made where the payment is in rocks. So as soon as those are conveyed to uh, the people, potentially they could um, enter, the, uh, you know, participate in markets. Uh, so that, that situation could change uh, within the week. So here's here's another question for you. Uh, I we've I think there's been pretty public statements made by Greg. Uh, I'm not sure if it's officially the co-op who made the statement, but uh, it's pretty clear that I think the language was the amps will have no utility on our chain. Is that can we agree that that's the general sentiment? Oh yeah, that's that's absolutely the uh, sentiment and design that you know when we're talking about the R chain platform. It will need to be a a, a token that's uh, issued natively on our chain, or possibly a marketplace that builds on top. But initially, um, you know, the commitment it'll be one token. It'll be the Rev token or whatever the better branding name comes around. But for now, we're using the, the term Rev. Um, Greg has the objective of creating multiple economic native tokens, but that's a uh, that's a hard software problem. Um, uh, and so it's and, and for example, Vlad Zamfer's argued against that approach. So that's uh, I wouldn't say it's locked uh, whether it's one or multiple. And then, regardless of that base economic token, then there can be either derived tokens or uh, similar to ERC twenty like things or markets that can exist on top of that. Um, but I don't expect in any of those scenarios that um, AMPs will have any special role. Right, so at, at the most, it could only be a pair, like an ERC twenty. Well, again, it would be um, it'd be more of a market that develops from the you know amps around the omni layer. There's not going to be any um, to my to, to my knowledge, nothing's planned certainly from the cooperative's perspective um, around uh, making uh, Bitcoin or omni layer tokens have uh, any kind of automatic value. So. Those would have to happen through uh, exchanges that that companies, you know, or, or individuals create. Got it. Okay, so that should answer some people's questions on the forums. It should be, it should be pretty clear that you know that that's yeah. the, that's the stance and and where amps could be seen close to Darch. I mean, it's just weird. I mean, they're not going to be on our chain. It's just going to there might be trade alongside. It's just. Know, yeah, and again, you know, again, um, I guess in our in our utopian uh, ideal view is, you know, a, a lot of the current cryptocurrency platforms and projects would would um, migrate to use the R chain platform and, and, and whatever migration path makes sense. Because certainly from the requirements perspective, we're trying to satisfy all the requirements for um, the ability to issue new multiple tokens, the ability to um, scale and to subdivide the um, space and um, to have uh, namespaces that have um, specific rules that uh, essentially address the reasons why a lot of blockchain projects were created in the first place. So in addition to, you know, scaling um, and throughput, you know, some of the reasons include philosophies about current currency supply or um, uh, having it be a private blockchain or a consortium blockchain or some other things. Um, and I think in a combination of smart contracts and namespaces, all those kinds of requirements could be met uh, with the Archain platform. So certainly we, that's our hope, right? Is that uh, our chain platform becomes more and more ubiquitous over time. Right, I hear you. 
Uh, I have another question. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, co-op has a, a different sort of approach to governance, and and that's of course one member, one vote. It's just a standard co-op. It's certainly different than the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, in terms of, um, I guess this is really going to come down to the community. But you know, for example, uh, right now in China, there's a lot. Uh, Unity put out a press release. Um, that there's there's MLM schemes using Ethereum tokens. Uh, I guess my question would be, you know, would would the co-op, uh, you know, be out to like maybe protect people um, that you know obviously there's going to be scams. People are going to be using arch. And you understand what I'm saying? I mean, are we going to get to that level of policing? Uh, because certainly I don't really see any press releases from the Ethereum Foundation like making it a effort to to like protect people from scams and of that, of that nature. But do you foresee that being possible in this, in this community or with this organizational structure? Um, that's a great question. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to answer it actually. Um, you know, as a, just, just, uh, you know, uh, let's say revs as a currency, right. And let's, let's just start with that. Um, all kinds of, of, interesting good and bad stuff can happen with uh, digital currency so what is the co-ops you know moral obligation and or legal obligation to to do protections around that even that much is not clear but then certainly when you talk about building any decentralized contract what's the obligation um uh you know that's also potentially not clear but um uh these are great Great, great questions. I, I will say on the uh, the DAP side, when the DAPs um, are are then uh, many times will be connected to a more centralized process or, or, or form a bridge, whether it's uh, something as simple as a, an oracle to, to bring in data or identity to prove that who, who you are with uh, know your customer, which is important for you know financial sector of transactions. Um, so that that's an example of something that needs to be solved and some of these kinds of or or even a social network right where there, um, there there might be an obligation for example in the protocol design to um, as a way of, of removing uh, revenge pornography or child pornography off off of the site right and some obligation to to do those things so there's a bunch of for these uh, uh, moral and legal and ethical questions that the co-op and the um, companies that build apps on top of it will have to work through. It's a great question. Cool. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not sure how you solve that. Uh, it, it's just, obviously it's going to be painful the next century. I mean, we're not going to kill each other off, I don't think, but it, it's certainly this level of freedom is unprecedented. The level of freedom that's coming with uh, right. digital currency, especially with something that is if, if Greg can build what he's building, it, it's certainly like what a hundred times faster than Ethereum. It, it, it's smart contracting. Everything is is so much. It's pushed to the extreme. So you're gonna get the other opposite side. You want to build this utopia, but you're gonna get the opposite side of that as well. So how do you combat that or or uh, protect people? That that's certainly on my mind. So it, it, exactly, you know the I I think of the analogy um, in in uh, currency is you know the. $100 bill is the uh, most used currency in the world, and most of it's out of the United States and used for all kinds of things that the United States didn't plan it to be used for. And certainly the same is going to be true with, you know, issuing of digital currency. Um, so. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I mean, one thing, one thing would be cool uh, is, is, you know, just like forensics on when exchanges get hacked. Um, you know, I, I'm not, it's really hard to recover funds, but just thinking about that, um, you know, how, how, how we can help that in, in, in potential, I know like, you know, uh, Gatecoin got hacked and Poloniex helped recover 5,000 ether for them. You know, if, if the co-op can do anything in, in those circumstances, when, when those things happen, it'd be really interesting to hire, uh, forensics teams and things like that. So interesting. Yeah, I think that, you know, in terms of the use of fees for the network, uh, we might want to consider allocating portions of that to um, uh, 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 
activities that help protect people from this dark side and uh, uh, mutual insurance uh, uh, to some extent for those uh, who fall victim to the dark side. That's, that's uh, yeah, that's a, a, a great idea is that there'd be a, um, yeah, a support or almost uh, philanthropic is not the right word, but um, a, a social good element of, of uh, what the cooperative does. I, I like that idea. White Hat R-Chain members. Yeah. White Hats, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cool. I, I wanted to uh, take a, a few moments and, and uh, talk about the um, holding company and just to give a, some brief update there. Um, I've, I've previously, uh, let's see, current slide desktop. I've previously uh, showed this slide, and it's it's also based on the the Slack channel. Um, but just as a a reference, where where things are, are you are you seeing the slide? Yeah, everything's good. Cool. Um, so uh, the the uh, there has been a, a signed agreement already between the R Chain Holdings and the R Chain Cooperative. Um, so what that agreement looks like is that the, um, the R-Chain Holdings is purchasing uh, development services for the technology um, from the cooperative. And so that's being received uh, over time through open source, as well as um, some rocks, um, a substantial portion of rocks. Uh, and then uh, that payment uh, will be due over time uh, based on um, milestones being hit um, by the cooperative and the development team. Um, and some of those details are going to be uh, worked out and refined, but basically that um, structure is approximately a year and a half, um, you know. And so th that, that agreement has been um, penned, and uh, that helps set up for better conversations with investors uh, so that when investors are investing, um, you know, they'll, they'll be investing in tranches. Um, uh, and these are, you know, the specifics are to be negotiated and we have to do our job uh, selling the vision, selling the business case and so forth. But they'll be invested in, in tranches. And so the initial tranche, um, most of that will flow down to the cooperative and will be essentially the first um, cash payment that is due um, as part of this this uh, uh, structured agreement, um, so I thought that would be helpful to understand kind of how that works. And um, I'm uh, another thing on the holding company that uh, we put in place uh, uh, just actually yesterday. I think we finished is we got a uh, contract uh, consultant for the chief financial officer kind of role for the holding company. Um, her name is Lisa, and will also be um, uh, providing, uh, you know, advice on, uh, for example, the accounting that the uh, cooperative should be doing. Uh, and so, HJ, uh, I'll introduce you to Lisa sometime in the, the near future, uh, just to get to know each other and start talking about some of the topics. So, um, you know, we're setting up uh, the accounting on the holding company side and, and uh, getting up to speed and then we need to um you know encourage hj or, or possibly an additional accountant you know who under, understands gap and, and tracks all the, the the accounting entry um on, on the cooperative side so i have a uh, have, uh, and i have a question for you um it uh if someone wanted to invest in the art chain holding company right now there's nothing stopping them correct yeah, that's correct. We're um, we're pitching to a number of large investors first, um, uh, but I'm, uh, you know, there's how do I say this? There's a lot of paperwork involved in these kinds of uh, uh, raises. Um, uh, they we want the largest investors to negotiate the term. Typically, there's a lead investor that. Um, you know, is comfortable with the terms and has relationships with the, the you know, the next set of large investors. 
Um, so the terms are negotiated, and then additional and um, you know smaller uh, amount of, of investors can come in with that. So in a sense, um, the only thing that's that's delaying that is sort of the I don't know the the level of the level of investor, but um, our our hope is that we'll be able to close investors that are uh, investing in either individually or as a as a group of five hundred thousand dollars or more. That's the kind of level we're we're talking about in that community. So that's the first set of conversations we're going to have um, there. And then so smaller investors, you know, at this for the time being are probably better um, if they want to get involved early and, and at, at this, it'd be better working with the cooperative to buy uh, rocks through the amp redemption process um, or possibly having a conversation with Greg directly. Right. So my, my second question is the uh, just just to kind of refresh everyone in the community as well. The 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 auto capital investment, is that specifically for the co-op? Or is that an, no. that's an investment in the R chain holding, correct? That's that's an investment in the R chain holdings, but like I mentioned, some some of that will flow to and initially um, the majority of it would, in terms of the the first tranche, would flow to the cooperative. Because okay, because okay, that's cool. So my question is, uh, there, there's a number of projects that I think could almost immediately start uh, developing. They're already developing their DApps, but I, I imagine. Um, with the right set of, of, of funds available that we can begin a conversation with uh, a lot of the dApps uh, in the Ethereum community. Uh, so you met one of the guys in Seattle, I introduced you to them to like the MakerDAO, for example, is another one. I imagine once you guys get the funds or if those projects are interested in funding the Archain holding company to develop a bridge between uh, what they have and our, our chain, I wanted to get that within the next like 30 days if possible. So I'm hoping that our redemption will, will close, Auto Capital will do their thing, you'll get your CFO, and then we can start bringing more money right in. Because, I mean, the, the connections I have, I'm pretty confident that they're going to want less, uh, have just more test beds. And just, these are all startups we're dealing with. Almost everybody in this space, even Ethereum, really hasn't proved it themselves until they're at an industrial scale. So the more DATs we have, uh, you know, in, in integrated in our chain, the better we're going to be. So... That's how I see it. Yeah, so um, there's there's uh, some sequencing t to that. Uh, I I admire your enthusiasm, and I'm happy to to start talking to DAP projects uh, with where, wearing my hat of the the holding company. Um, I, I will say that uh, there's only so much they can do in the short term um, in terms of you know they could they could start learning Rolang, but uh, it's challenging now to sort of uh, pull up an environment and, and doing uh, even hello world or much more than ho hello world. Now that's that's going to rapidly change, but the first set of of people we we desperately need on the project is actually what I'll call core developers who will build the R chain platform itself. Um, and so that's I think in in addition to in, investors, um, that's actually the most important audience is. Um, targeting uh, platform developers. So these are people that uh, understand uh, program language design, uh, understand peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. communication, uh, uh, can build a consensus protocol and debug it, can um, do DevOps around the co-op, um, build uh, contracts such as ERC-20 or these kind of token and currency contracts on the platform. And all of this, um, and so, yeah, there's certainly some DAP developers who have those skills and can participate. Um, but in the actual DAP side, um, what I'm looking for, again, wearing my hat as the uh, holdings president, um, are kind of uh, just to get to know people, to uh, spread the network and talk about um, sort of the future and, and roadmap around that and also understand the business model that uh, a DAP developer or a DAP project team might have. Um, so that uh, that we're, we make sure that it's worth our time on the holding company that it there is a um, a, a for profit uh, model there and 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 the profit by the way can be something uh, as a very clever such as a a revenue stream that a smart contract could generate in terms of transaction fees or or whatever um, it wouldn't necessarily have to be what 
what maybe the conventional profit models are in startups uh, of um, you know all kinds of uh, pay, pay for got it okay so you know a, a, a simple analogy I mean what we're building here with the our chain holding company uh, maybe people may understand it a little bit better is this sort of like a consensus consensus being the company in New York set up by jo Joseph Lubin it's an incubator uh, obviously they have a lot of projects um, is, is this similar to that in that in that yeah, respect it's, it's it's very similar um, I'm I'm still learning uh, how consensus works internally um, uh, all of their projects with the exception of two I think are kind of wholly owned by consensus and then they're you know and they're trying but one of the, one of the things that's very similar that we would do is um, have have a strategy where the the, the dApps that the holding uh, company encourages and works with would integrate and and create more value together. Um, uh, and so, for example, uh, many of the dApps uh, in the space uh, require things such as uh, wallets, and there's a variety of types of wallets. Um, but for example, the conversation with MetaMask was very interesting because. Um, uh, a browser-based wallet is is one of the types of wallets that, that's very enabling to make um, uh, the onboarding of, of of new projects and customers uh, much easier. So that's that kind of wallet is very interesting. And then um, to attract those that are in the more uh, traditional banking and finance industry to to the table, we we're going to need to address some identity solutions for the, for that community. Um, uh, fairly early, and we're going to have to address secure messaging. And so we have a, a series of of focus areas on the holding company that that I want to make sure we address early. So let's let's uh, let's say if um, uh, the Augur project was uh, very interested in in uh, our chain platform, that would be great. But rather than talking about uh, a prediction market, which we we you know understand at, at the High level anyway, we would say, okay, how can you help with the platform? How can you help with the wallet? How can you help with identity or whatever these early things are? Um, just so that we stay somewhat focused. But I, anyway, just to summarize, I'm 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 uh, very open to talking to DAP developers and projects that are, are interested in our chain. Got it. Okay, yeah, because this seems like the goal again, uh, attract the investment. Uh, okay, that's not a problem. It's we can find different ways to get the investment. The developers are certainly the harder thing to find. Uh, so, so I'm just trying to think, what what's the best route to do that? Uh, you know, it, it's really going to come down to what they need because a lot of those platforms they obviously haven't created their technology either. So, yeah. Um, so it, it's just going to take time. It's just more time in the space. And more conversations need to be developed. It seems. Yeah. Um, so you know. Uh... I'd like to get some uh, job postings uh, out there for, uh, or or call for developers specifically around the platform. Um, and I, it could go both ways, correct? So, for example, if I have five million dollars, I come to you. I'm like, here's five million. Build me this on our chain. You're like, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> is, could, is that, I'm serious. Is that is, is that possible? Is that the level we're getting here, or is it the opposite as well? No, no, uh, money definitely talks uh, in, in any circumstance, right? Um, and uh, uh, I haven't thought much about um, uh, the holding company or uh, uh, Lively Gig um, providing services at a really high level, but uh, that may be a very important and, um, and profitable um, business to get things going. But certainly, once that we form... Um, uh, joint ventures or create startups to to build, you know, DAP application X or Y, then we'll obviously uh, help help those companies uh, intensely. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely what I want to know. So I'll wait cool. wait to that point, and then I'll send everyone over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, other topics. Uh, uh, Kent joined uh, recently. Hi, Kent. Uh, and and. Gary, uh, anyone else? Hey. It'd be nice to hear uh, what's happening in your end of the bar, Kent. Anything to report? Oh, sorry. I've been 
mostly out for the week. I was traveling. Yeah, I've been uh, traveling all week. Right? So also, so <laughs> I haven't gotten much uh, activity done. The HJ has been doing a great job setting up community stuff. And I haven't been much help in the past week. <laughs> well, welcome back, Jim and Kent. That's awesome. And uh, hey, hey. Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was. I had another question, but you guys finish up first. I was just going to ask uh, Navneet if he wanted to give any updates on uh, the work he's been doing for the co-op uh, on on some of the platform work. Maybe not. Oh, okay. Um, Go ahead, uh, Christian. Yeah, so the last question is, do you foresee, I'm sure, again, these conversations haven't been going on or haven't even been started, but uh, could you foresee the Ethereum Foundation, <laughs> this is uh, this is the point, it's pretty clear, Ethereum, as everyone knows, is up to $41. So do you foresee perhaps the Ethereum Foundation uh, maybe funding uh, or the Archain Co-op? Because I, isn't the Ethereum Foundation a non-profit? Um. I, I actually don't. I, I think they're a nonprofit. They're a, a Swiss entity. Um, and I don't know uh, how, how the structures work there um, or, or how they're formed. Um, uh, I, I don't see, uh, at, at least in, in an obvious way, uh, that the Ethereum Foundation would, would uh, fund our chain, but uh, who knows? Well, maybe it's specific things. I mean, the Casper development's been ongoing for. I mean, in December it'd be two years. So, I was wondering if that's if that's really heating up. And uh, I don't know. I, it, it's just interesting. I mean, you, everyone I feel wants the same thing, but it's very hard and difficult to get there. And at least in the market, certain currencies are winning. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I think. Uh, for example, Dash is the same thing. Dash, I, I, you know, it's up to a hundred dollars. I mean, that whatever that foundation. I mean, they're probably for profit, uh, pretty centralized, but. I, why couldn't they just open up a twenty thousand dollar a month grant to the Archain Co-op to develop specific, uh, just solve, crack this puzzle? Yeah. We need this well, essentially academic work. Really, that's really what. Yeah, the, yeah. Think, yeah, yeah. I think we have still a lot of uh, education and uh, demonstration of our our technology and progress to make. You know, I I and everyone here obviously feels like there's. Uh, you know, tremendous asset in, in Greg and what he has uh, invented and, uh, and, and assembled. Um, uh, but we really have to demonstrate, you know, um, our progress in, 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 in a couple of ways and then also do some education. Uh, so, you know, uh, Dash, uh, you know, uh, Right now, it, it would be difficult for any, you know, name your your DAP or projects. It's it's difficult for someone to come in to understand our chain and to be convinced that it's better than what they're building on. Um, I obviously believe that most of people here believe that, um, but we really have to demonstrate it, and then and then they will come. They will come, and the um, uh, the, the the project will be more and more known, you know. But we. We haven't really um, demonstrated Hello World yet on on our chain and or Rolang, and and we haven't built Casper yet. We haven't built Multinode on this platform, and 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 so all that's got to get put in place, and then and then things will turn around dramatically. So and so we're in about nine. You say time frame nine months to a year before that's that's really possible. Well, I'm talking about before a release and before and before. Um, the rocks are redeemed to revs. Uh, um, we we really haven't done uh, finished a, a disciplined um, project plan estimate. We've started it. Uh, we created a, a work breakdown structure. We um, uh, have started a staffing plan, um, but we need to complete that uh, product backlog in terms of uh, what what some people call epics and user stories. Um, and then and then do estimation that way and uh, with with a set of assumptions right set of funding assumptions set of staffing assumptions and then estimation of these user stories um, and it, it really won't be until we finish that process that I'll be confident about that estimate but um, yes to answer your question that's our current estimate is nine months to a year um, uh, 
be well let's see let me let me back up a year to year and a half before the first release of of um of a product that is uh, you know production ready um now much earlier we'll be able to write um rolling contracts and to work with the platform okay so here's another question obviously i think that once the redemption event is over um uh, at least you'll have more of um more people willing to share risk with you in, in terms of development because you can compensate them at least in something so um my my question is how impo how important is sort of the the, the market in, in making your progress push faster for example you can't control where the rocks will be traded so if they start to get on here and here and here and the value goes up 10x now the the, the value of these tokens can be you know you paid out the developers you can track more developers and that process can get speeded up so what's the correlation between the market and and and, and the the speed at which we we can move here oh, oh certainly there's a correlation so um you know de depends on each person but at the end of the day everyone you know needs to to put food on the table and pay for their their housing and so that's us dollars for the most part or, or wherever whatever the local currency um, so there's there's a real correlation, and and the amount of risk is going to be lower when rocks. Uh, uh, I, I have to sort of be cautious about it is if and when rocks have a market that's that's a uh, that's a uh, to to fiat. But um, yeah, so absolutely, there's a really strong correlation. But just uh, we we can sign developers that get compensated in rocks today if the right kind of talent. Um, comes forward and gets involved in the project. We welcome we welcome you with open arms. Um, it, you know, again, the types of skills that we need most desperately are on the uh, platform itself: program language design, compilers, um, decentralized or sorry, distributed peer-to-peer -peer communications, consensus algorithms, smart contract development, that kind of thing. Great. Okay. And so. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of on your on your plate. It, it, in the next maybe week, can we get a posting in a Google Doc or perhaps even HA can help with this? Uh, a list of jobs that is specific language. It's very specific in the, in, the, in the job calling, so I can send it to a few developers um, uh, that, that that might need that. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's on my list to move that forward. I have some some drafts and um, probably need uh, probably need Greg's eyeballs on it. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. I uh, I'll try to move forward on that in the next week. Great, sounds great. Cool, cool. Um, all right, we're at the top of the hour. Anything uh, as Greg would like to say? Any other burning questions? <laughs> well, you said we didn't even really do the hello world, and uh, uh, you know I'm really excited that uh, Greg had success in compiling uh, a hello world. Uh, uh, in uh, Rolang, uh, in I think in the past week. Awesome. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, you know, I guess it's just a matter of he gets the rosette and then he can run the rosette. It's not uh, uh, put all put together. Or uh, you didn't know he you didn't know about the hello world. <laughs> well, I knew I knew that it worked. I, I knew that it worked on on one developer's um, platform, but you know, for a developer to come on board, I'm just saying we, we got to move, keep moving forward. That's my point. Not, not I would, didn't mean to diminish that progress. It's just there's a lot of pieces in before right. they, uh, bring on a, a, a DAP developer that the platform's got to be a little farther along. Cool. Right on. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Great. All right. Thanks. Peace out.